Hey kids, and welcome to today's lesson. I hope you guys are all keeping well and keeping safe, and I hope school is going well, and that you've also been able to uh, stay cool and uh, not overheat during these very warm and very humid days that we've been having. Uh, and also, I hope that you guys have been able to enjoy uh, the outdoors in some capacity and not overheat outdoors. Uh, whether that's going on a walk, playing with friends or family, or yeah, just even, I don't know, kicking a ball around, doing whatever you do to enjoy the outdoors. Uh, and as always, I know school is finishing up, so we will continue to pray for you guys as that uh, is coming to a close in the final few weeks. So yeah, hope that's going well, and we'll continue to pray. Thumbs up. Alrighty, and so before we get into today's lesson, uh, just a few things. The first is that last week, if you remember, we introduced a memory verse with some actions, and we introduced those actions last week. Uh, we're going to go over that a few times today. We're going to go over it once, slowly, and then we're going to do it a second time, a little faster, just so we can get familiar, keep getting familiar with the actions, and keep uh, memorizing that verse. So I hope you guys have been practicing and yeah, we'll do it. The words will still appear on the screen if you don't know it yet. Uh, but don't get used to that because we might be taking a few words out or we might be just taking the verse away uh, shortly. Maybe next week, maybe the week after. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, I'm going to take a few steps back and then we'll go through the verse together uh, with the actions. All right. So you all should be able to see me and still hear me. So if you remember, our memory verse is in Colossians 3.17, and it goes like this. And whatever you do, wh whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3.17. So yeah, uh, we've done it once slow. Now let, let's do it a little faster. See, see how well we can do it. All righty. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3.17. So yeah, I hope you guys have been able to practice that. And I hope you guys will keep practicing that in the weeks to come. So that by the end of the month, you guys, have it, you guys will have it all memorized. And you'll be able to say it without my help. And yeah. That's, that's the hope, that's the goal. So keep practicing in the next few weeks and we'll see how you guys can do. Alrighty, now the second thing before we get into this week's lesson is just a little quick recap of last week and the week before and kind of what we talked about and what we're going through. So if you remember, two weeks ago, we introduced the topic of call and what it means to be called and what kind of call means. Uh, we also talked about how there's no call without a caller. And that kind of led us into last week where we talked about how we are all called to be uh, followers of Jesus or we are called to follow Jesus. And another way we thought about thinking of this is that we are called to be in a relationship with Jesus. And once we've agreed and or accepted or we've decided to answer or follow that call, then, uh, as Pastor Dan mentions, we will all become, we will become a group of holy people or a group of godly people doing our best to live out God-honoring lives. So yeah, that's it's kind of what we've been talking about for the past few weeks. So uh, yeah, and I think this week's lesson ties in really well to that. Oh, hi Henry. What's up? Oh, right, you just got back from vacation, didn't you? How was the vacation? Really good? You enjoyed it? Uh, where'd you go? He says a tropical island uh, with a very nice beach. Yeah, 
no, that sounds like a really good time. What'd you do? You collect rocks. Nice. That's that's cool because we've seen your rock collection. It's pretty nice. What else did you do? You went surfing. As a as a I don't know how that works, Henry. As a hippo. But it was fun anyway. All right. Well, that well that's good that you had fun. Now, are you ready to get back to work? What do you mean, no? You had your vacation time. You just want to sleep and eat and enjoy. Well, actually, this ties in really well to today's lesson. So do you want to hear more about that? All right. So how about you go find a comfortable place, don't fall asleep, and I'll teach a lesson and you can listen in. How's that sound? All right, can you say bye to the kids, Henry? All right, well, Henry's gonna go and find a comfortable place for him to sit and to listen in to what today's lesson is all about. So, as mentioned just now with Henry, today's lesson is that we are called to work. Now, this may sound like an intimidating task or something uh, that requires us to be grown up to do, but it really doesn't, so buckle up with me for a second. So what's cool is that we, um, the call to work appears all throughout the Bible. And it appears at the very beginning with the creation of Adam and Eve. See, when God created them, he called them to work and to take care of the earth. That was their main responsibility for them to do. And as we go through the Old Testament, we see that this idea of work and our call to work changes and, uh, yeah, grows throughout. We see with the introduction of sin that God says our work will be hard and that it will be tiresome. So that's one thing that I'm sure we can all agree on. Um, but as we keep reading and as we continue to read, uh, we read that... And when we work, we will be rewarded for our, for our work and that it won't always be easy work. There will be some script, scripture references down here at the bottom uh, that talk about what work will look like. Now you may be thinking, well, what did work look like and what does that mean? Because when I think of work, I think about coming into the church each day to do the responsibilities that I have. And you might think of your mom or dad going to work and uh, sitting in an office or uh, sitting at a desk with a computer doing whatever they do. Or you maybe, yeah, maybe you have an older brother or sister who works at a restaurant or who works at a grocery store. There's a bunch of different ways we can think about work. But what's cool is that work in this context has a bit of a different meaning. So as we see in the New Testament, there's still this call to work, but it changes because of this relationship with Jesus that uh, we are called to have. You see, this relationship with Jesus, we are with this relationship with Jesus, we are called to represent him or be ambassadors, which is just a fancy way of saying representative, of Jesus. So we are called to represent Jesus in our words and our actions. And this work that we're doing is to bring uh, this vision of God's peace and justice and kingdom to this world. Something that we kind of talked about, how talked about months ago, where God's justice is seeing everyone have what they need to survive and grow. That's kind of the work that God wants us to do and that we can do when we follow Jesus is to spread the love of God and the love of Jesus to all that we work and interact with. So with that being said, I'm going to pray and then you guys can get on with your day. All right, let's bow our heads together. Dear God, we thank you for today and we thank you that we can work to spread your love and your justice and uh, yeah, spread who you are to this world through our actions, our words, and our deeds. We pray that we'd be that we would learn to do this and that we would continue to do this and grow as we do this and as we follow your call. We pray this in your name. Amen. Alright, kids. 
Uh, you guys have a good rest of your, your day, and I'm going to go check on Henry to see how much he paid attention to my lesson. Take care.